Hi, this is Molly, and I'm going to share with you how you can create a Google form that you can collect information from um, anybody that you need to. So any kind of survey or um, any kind of evaluation or um, any way that you would want to collect information from people onto a spreadsheet. So we're going to walk through how you can do that. Um, the first thing that you would need to do is go and access um, Edina apps. And so the best way to do that is go to district and then go to staff resources. And once you're at staff resources, you'll see that there's a Moodle Edina apps login. And when you click on the Moodle Edina apps login, you get here. Over on the left hand side, there will be a login box for your username and password. Right now I've already logged in. So that does not exist right here. So you would log in, and once you log in using your district username and password, you see that you're in Edina apps. And on the left hand side or on the right hand side, you have all of your Edina apps Google tools. So Gmail, Calendar, Documents. We are going to be using Google Docs in order to create a new form. So once you click on Google Docs, it takes you to your Google Docs inbox which we have learned all about Google Docs and how to share them and then the collections that you can organize. Today what we're going to be doing is learning about Google Forms. And the way that you access those are in Create Google Form. I want to show you what a Google Form looks like before we start. <clears throat> so for Tech Camp this year, we use a Tech Camp application. And the application was made using a Google Form. So as you can see here, I've developed the title and a little information. And then I've asked people to fill out their first name, select the school they go to, what their teaching assignment is, and if they're going to be taking online or face-to-face -face tech camp. Each of these questions is a different type of question type that you can create using your Google form. So for example, this one is a text box. This is a drop down menu. This is another text box. And this one is a multiple choice. There are additional check boxes and scale and grid types of question. Now, in my form, once they fill it out, I've actually selected for it to go to another page. You do not have to create different pages, it can just be something you scroll down to. But once somebody fills out all the information and they go through, at the end of the form, there will be a submit button. And that's how users enter data. Now, once somebody completes my technology camp application, Google automatically organizes it into a spreadsheet for me. You'll notice that the questions that I asked are now different columns, and what people fill out is now underneath each of those columns. So I'm going to teach you how you can create a Google form and collect information this way. So again, like I said, we're going to start in Google Docs. And in Google Docs, I'm going to start with create a form. When the create form comes out, I can start by clicking into my title. So I'm going to do a end of the school year survey. That is where I title my form. And then in here I can say thanks for providing some feedback on your 2011-12 school year. You can do any kind of text that you want to there. Now you'll notice in Google Forms, they've provided us with two sample questions. In order to access these sample questions, you can see that once I hover over them, they turn a little bit of a yellow color, a tan color, and I also get three buttons, one being edit, duplicate, and delete. So I'm going to edit the first button. Now if I wanted to have an anonymous form, I would not ask for the person's name. But in this case, I am going to ask for the person's name. And I'm going to ask for the last name and the first name to be separate so that they're each in different columns on my spreadsheet. So I'll put last name. Help text is if you would like to add an additional piece of information for them. 
The next is the pull-down menu, and the pull-down menu allows you to choose which type of question that you want to ask. So in order, if I'm just asking for people's last name, a text box, which looks like this, is exactly what I would want. If I want to make sure that this person fills out this question before pushing the submit button, I'd make it a required question and click done. Now, I will hover over the second question, go all the way to the end, and click on edit. Now I would like the participants or the person who's going to be filling out the survey their first name. Again, a text box is going to be just fine. I'm going to make it required and click done. So now I have my first two questions, but there aren't any additional sample questions for me to hover over and edit. So I have to use the top right hand corner and pick the type of question that I would like. So I'm going to choose a couple different kinds and show you just a little bit about them. So the first one is multiple choice. Multiple choice has only one correct answer. So I would say um, a multiple choice question that I could ask them could be, um, what is your favorite subject to teach? Now, they can only have one if it's their favorite, right? So if I click in these boxes below, I can start typing, reading. If I click the tab button or click my cursor into the next button down, it gives me another option. Math, writing, science, social studies. If I've been my mistake, click in one and I don't have option six, I don't want to leave it there because it will come up as an empty blank. But I can use these little X's on the side that I can get rid of an option that I mistakenly clicked on. If there's a subject that you may not know about that the teachers have taught and you want to provide a space for them to write in their own answer, you can click Add Other and then it will allow that in there. I make it a required question if I want it to be and I click Done. Now you can see what the question looks like. Again, multiple choice questions can only have one right answer. The next type of question that I'll ask is a check boxes question. Check boxes means that teachers can choose more than one. So my question to them is going to be, what, was, what were the three best professional development activities of the year? Okay, now I um, can do the help text here by saying, remember, only choose three. So that's my little help text. So here I'm going to do tech camp. Back to school workshops. Um, we'll do your PLC, your community, or your building staff development, or out of district um, conference. Again, with the check boxes, I can add other. I'll make it required and click done. So now you can see the difference between the multiple choice and the check boxes. The choose from a list question looks a little bit different in the edit form than in the uh, what it looks like on the computer. So I'm going to say, what's my question tile? What school do you work at? And now I'm going to do CS, CN, CC, CS. ND, Highlands, Southview, Valley View, High School, District Office. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on Done, and you'll see that now this question is like a drop down menu. Okay? So it allows to, it, you know, it doesn't take up very much space. And the last question I'll ask is a scale question. So my scale question is going to be. Um, how did you feel about the 2011-12 school year? Okay, now this is on a scale of 1 to 5, but I could also do on a scale of 1 to 10 or 1 to 5 or 1 to 3. So I'll just save it with 5. Now I have to make my own labels. So 1 was the worst year ever, and 5 was the best year ever. And once I click done, you can see what that scale question looks like. It looks like they can choose one, two, three, but you only get to do the choices between one and five. 
So now we've created our Google form and we are ready to send it out to teachers. Now, one of the things that we are going to need to do is we are going to need to go up and uncheck the box, require eDyna app sign in to view this form. The reason why we are doing that is because you will notice that at the very bottom of this um, Google form, in the very bottom, okay, there is an address right here. This is the address, the URL that you would need to send to people if you were going to tell them um, to fill out your form, okay? But as you can see right now, it has the words at apps, .edina.k12.mn.us in it. That would mean that only somebody who has an Edina account can fill that in. So I need to uncheck this box, require Edina apps, click OK, but it still has not gotten rid of the apps.edina. I have to refresh the page, and you'll notice now, after I've refreshed, if you look down that at apps.edina.k12 is not there anymore. Okay. So I've created my form, I've unchecked. Now the la one of the last things that we can do here is we can make it pretty, okay? So I'm gonna click on theme, and these are all different types of themes that I can use for my Google form. So I'm gonna click on this one, Bluebirds. It gives me what my Google form will look like using that theme. If I'm happy with it, I click apply. If I'm not happy with it, I click cancel, I go back and it lets me choose again. There are 97 different versions. So why don't I choose this one, floral? That one looks a little nicer. I'll click apply. It takes me back to the editing version, but you can see here it says theme floral. So in this screencast, you've learned how you can create your Google form in the edit mode and how you take out the at apps.edina.k12 in the address bar. In the next screencast, you will learn how to interact with your Google form that you've created.